Good morning, hi, it's Jeanette. Um, it's a beautiful sunny morning here in North Worcestershire in the UK in my home studio, um, Far Forest Ceramics. Um, I've had a nice early start, it's 6.30 in the morning and I am so eager to open this kiln opening. Um, haven't looked forward to one as much as this for quite some time. Um, I've got a few pieces in here that I've done a couple of experiments with, you know me, I love an experiment. So I've got one where I've took mystery chips and scatter them all over the top of a vertical piece um so i want to see how much that's run has it run completely onto the bottom which i'm hopeful for some nice results i've tried as well some bottles don't do bottles i've only done them twice before but i had my son who's uh, lives in canada um managed to get some of these for me um because i'm struggling to get them in the uk so they're literally a cork stopper with a hole in and you've got the lotion pumps um that go on the top so I've tried to fit these in and obviously shrinkage and all that. So that's going to be interesting to see if they work. Um, got a few with texture on, some nice simple glazes. Oh, yes, that's the other thing I tried. Um, I'd seen it on YouTube. That's how I do all my um, learning. I'd seen on YouTube that when you throw in on the wheel and then after you've just thrown it and it's still... Um, like very wet clay you then put some slip over the top of it and add some texture with slip with your fingers so I've tried that on two or three pieces to see how that flowing effect works it looked really lovely in a bisque fire but who knows what happens when I put glaze on it so yeah there's a few houses in here a couple of stoneware gnomes oh on the top I've got some um yeah some little I better just get on with it haven't I yeah on the top is just simply some heart test indicator test tiles to put on the front of my stroke and coat so it's just some stroke and coat make sure i'm missing the camera oh yes so some new bottles of colors that i didn't know how they were going to show on stoneware my white stoneware clay so these are three coats fired at this is my standard setting that it's aimed for a cone six but it comes about a six and a half so hopefully they haven't dripped so what i do is i attach these onto the front of my bottles of um i'll just show you what i've done with another previous one ah oh. So I literally, my stroke and coat, I just do um, a tile with some texture on and I just use floristry ribbon and sellotape it on the back. But for me, I love these sitting on my shelves because it gives me a great um, insight into the colour. But so this one, which is spelt grappel, um, stroke and coat. Um, what are these? These are the, yeah, they're just the stroke and coats. Um, the Mako Stroke and Coats. This is three coats and this is Grapple or Grape, I believe. So that, if I want a solid colour, I think I need to do more coats um, on that one. I like this one. That's beautiful. So that is Melancholy on there. Very nice. This, I think, is Ruby Red. Oh, uh, no, Ruby Slippers. Ruby Slippers. Oh, my hole's gone there, so I'm going to have to just drill that one out didn't clean that one out enough this one i believe is dandelion yeah dandelion very nice and this is orange appeal speckled orange appeal i like that really nice so these are for me to do some i've got loads of terracotta clay and i'm trying to do some garden gnomes not garden gnomes just gnomes ornamental gnomes but then i've also got some in stoneware that i'm doing so while i've got some indicator hearts already bisked so that's that cantaloupe I've just done some for the front of my bottles and I'll do some with terracotta as well. And that one is cottontail, speckled cottontail. I like that. Very nice. Yeah, some nice colours there. Very, very nice. Nice and simple. So I am so looking forward to this. Oh, yes. See, I get a bit excited. I am a morning person. I know a lot of people are up at six in the morning aren't as bubbly as me. But yeah, my poor husband, he's like... Let me have a cup of tea first, please, Pam. Let me have a cup of tea. Um, so, the other thing I've got in here, which I believe is on this next, which I believe is on this next shelf, is um, I had my lovely niece Libby with me um, for a day playing with clay, and we took one of those green ferns that you have in the garden and put it onto a piece of clay, and I didn't know how to put the colour into it. So the texture's come lovely in a nice little oval platter, so it's a bit of a test piece. So I've just used a bit of stroke and coat. I think it was green thumb and I just diluted it a little bit and I've just used a paintbrush and it didn't go into all the textures naturally. I've had to actually dab it. So I've just done that with some um, clear over the top of it. 
might have gone milky, might not have done enough on the clear. Oh, there's so many things that can go wrong, but this is the fun bit. Right, I'm excited. Come on, are we ready? Come on, Jeff. Oh, I love it. Oh, 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 I love it. I love that. Oh, I really love that. That is beautiful. I was concerned it was going to come out too, just like a blob of green, but I used my pen brush, I thinned it down and it went into the texture and I then did some areas with like a second coat. So I was wanting to try and have different tones of the green, like density, not tones, but it's all one color. I really love that. That is a great test. Oh, Libby, 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 isn't that beautiful? So this is one that we did together. The other ones that she did on her own, I've left for her to glaze herself. So I literally put a foot on it, just a shallow foot, and I've clear glazed the inside. I like that. I think that's quite nice. So only the unglazed part is the foot. It's nice and shallow. Has it warped at all? Is it wobbling? No, perfect. I think that's gorgeous. Now this fern, we've got quite a bit in our garden. So I am going to play with this a little bit more because it's, I love the way that you can bend it, you can move it. And that is really nice. Is it just me? I mean, I know I've got a bit of bright colors recently, but it's just nice to have something a little bit more neutral. That's, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, I like that one. I really like that one. Oh, and then the sunshine, beautiful morning sunshine glistening on that. I know I'm too far away, you can't see it. But when the sunshine catches that, that is stunning. Beautiful light here in the sun. Okay, so the other things I've got here are just some bases for some trees that I've got lower down. So I've used sea salt. I'm at the end of my tub, so i um, gathered quite a few crystals here. Um, I like this sea salt though, it's a matte glaze. So these are just bases for some trees to sit over the top on. No drippage underneath, which is lovely. I was hoping it wouldn't, but I always put them on mini cookies that I just make, just to be sure. I did one um, tree in white gloss on a previous firing, so I've just done a base. Don't like that texture on there. And then I did some previous trees with lime shower that I'd forgot to do some bases for them to sit on. So that's like luminaire bases. Um, you'll see them lower down when they come out. Okay, so next layer. What have we got here? Oh, this is the exciting layer. <laughs> well, I think that layer was quite exciting because it got that fern platter. Right, so this layer is the one I've got the mystery trip. Blah, 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 blah. I need another cup of tea. Mystery chips thrown in and thrown on the side and on my bottles, which I need to test if the, co the cork's gonna fit. Some houses I've made and some trees. Please, please, please be kind. It'll be a good start today, this will, if it works. Oh, yes. Oh, it took me a while to absorb. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <gasps> From the top, it's very hard to see, but I am seeing mystery chips, texture, beautiful colours, trees working out, two little gnomes. This is a good one, this is a good one. Where shall we start? Should we do the mystery chips first? Don't be stuck, don't be stuck. Have you dribbled all the way down? Oh, 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 wow. That's a lot of drippage. That's a lot of drippage and it's caught this cookie. So, but actually I'm gonna be able to grind that down quite easily. I'll just knock this off because at the moment, oh, it's coming off anyway, that's okay. But I'll be able to grind those down, but I went still too high, still too low. But look at those mystery chips. <gasps> That's gorgeous, isn't it? So if I did that much, much higher, like I put it on halfway down the chips. This is beautiful. There's no pinhole and it's beautiful and smooth. Look at that. Isn't that 
gorgeous. This is stunning. Really a shame that it's dripped that much, but I can recover that by grinding that um, down to the, to the bottom, no problem at all. It's just a shame because these drips would be lovely if I'd have got this plain um, sand and sea at the bottom, but I put too heavy a coating on, so I think I need to do that on a taller one. But shall I just see if my cork fits or if has it shrunk too much? <gasps> well, could you believe it? That cork, when I threw it, the top was level. When I trimmed it and I opened up the middle a little bit more, I could see pretty much, I don't know, a quarter of an inch over the top. And that's how much it shrunk. So I've done these and took photographs of them at each stage so I could see the the the, the amount it shrinks with regard to the cork because I would prefer this cork to be sat where there's only just a tiny bit showing. It's still not a problem. It's just not as attractive with such a high corking, in my opinion. See, this one's got a lot of um, clay I need to wash off. But it's not a problem with the fit, it's just too much cork in my opinion. But isn't that beautiful? Can you imagine that with that in the top? <laughs> Cute! I love that glaze there though. So gorgeous. I've got so many mystery chips um, that are building up. I am going to do a set of taller items and try that technique because that is outstanding. What a beautiful glaze. And then what I put on the inside is, I'm trying to remember now, just a stoneware clear I did on the inside. So it's um, got a glaze on the inside of it as well. Love, 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 love. Okay, I did another textured bottle. Oh, again, it's run. Wow, these have ran a lot. These don't normally run this much. Very strange. I've not normally had them run this much, so that's going to take again quite a bit of dremeling to take that off. But this is, I believe this is Midnight Rain. Midnight Rain, that's come beautiful on that texture. What a shame it's dripped that much, but I can still sort it. It's just a bit of breaking this cookie off and dremeling that bottom down that bottom edge. But that again is gorgeous on that texture. I will do that again for sure. Learning, where's my cork gone? Again, let me see. Same, about the same again. <laughs> yeah, these were, oh, I've got one tiny bit of lump of something there. It's not a pinhole. Oh, isn't that glaze gorgeous? And again, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Am I going to have the same problem that everything has dripped ridiculously? Let's have a look and see. So this one, oh, this hasn't dripped because it's left the cookie behind. Oh, ooh. Ooh. so this this is actually one I was thinking for my mum because she's got this colour scheme so this is Norse blue with Celadon bloom over the top but this is this texture that I said that I'd done and I wish now I'd actually just done this with nothing on the top because that is gorgeous isn't it on that ripple texture you've lost that ripple texture a little bit with the glaze coming down but that I love that I'm going to do that with nothing but one single glaze over the top of in future. That's really nice. Wish it could go a bit lower, but again, this is how I'm learning. I still like that. Very nice. I apologise for I keep wiping my nose. I've got hay for you this morning and I've got it's itching. <laughs> Please don't sneeze. My tablets haven't kicked in yet. Hay fever season in the UK. I think that's lovely. Beautiful there. Very nice. And I did another one with this. What did I do on this one? I'm trying to remember where my nose. I think this is stone denim. Okay, this is stuck. Okay. Oh. Oh, that's in, oh what's going on here on the top? What's that? <laughs> what is this? Where's that come from? This is just stone denim, nothing else but stone denim. How on earth have I got that? That's a bit of a random, isn't it? It's texture and I'm not, if it was just like that, okay, fair enough, but I'm not quite sure what happened here. Cork's on a bit lower in that one. I'm not sure about that. I might refire that, but this has got a nice neat edge on the bottom. That was just stone denim. Texture, okay, but again, the bottle's not bad. <laughs> I suppose it's a feature. It's what makes it unique. There's definitely not another one like it. 
Okay, then I did just some tumblers. I was just working on some luminaires to put candles in. Um, so this, I believe, is just blue opal. So I went for one that would hopefully show the texture up and give me a bit of a two-tone and just the nice, um, nice plain, one simple um, colour on these that I thought would be quite nice. Oh, that's close again. These are dripping more. Let's hope that's not wobbling. No, that's fine. Well, they're quite pretty, aren't they? Again, to have little candles in. It's quite good how that's broken. Yep, yeah, nice, nice, nice. So then these are my trees that I've done in the sea salt to go with those bases that I mentioned to you before. And those lovely. Those are sweet. So I've got little holes in them. These actually took me a long time to make. I was surprised. But so many people do them on the internet. Um, and I wanted to add some with holes in so that when I put the tea light in, it lights up. And this sea salt really suits this tree. Um, very nice. So those are having the little base that goes underneath. So that then the little tea light can go on there. I've got some battery um, tea lights as well, which work lovely. And then they flicker inside and then the tree actually lights up at night. I think those are, that's, that's the beautiful glaze for those trees. So I might, I've just run out of sea salt. I just literally used them all, the last of my tub. So this one you can see hasn't got as much. I was running out here. I watered the pot down, used all my crystals. But it still turned out very nice. So actually I don't need the full three coats if necessary going forward. I think I prefer it with the three coats. But on these trees that works out very nice. Love them. I do love these. I think they've got... Ooh, I do love these. These are just cookies that... Um, I've made in different shapes and sizes to suit me placing them underneath. At least it's helped when I've got these drips. It's not damaging my kiln shelf. To be careful now that this is not, I'm not gonna knock these over. Last one. Love those, really nice. Let me move these out of the way. So, I've been doing some little houses, making a little far forest village again for um, to put tea lights in. So what I'm going to do as well is I've got some gold lustre that I will pick up this small detail with some gold lustre. Um, so these ones have got a base in them. Now my first prototypes I did literally with nothing on the bottom and they weren't perfectly square so I've now worked out a former that I've got a template, um, it works on a block of wood, and I have somewhere, I've tried my gold luster as a test, first time using it. So that is the principle of picking up a bit of gold luster on three little bits, which is what I'll do there. Using different textures on the roof, so I love this um, Himalayan salt is what I put on the roof. And I'm trying some two coats, some, this was two coats, this was three coats, but I love the different um, effects on every house and I just use here is white opal so that my clay grins through I think that's really nice I love that and then this one again same principle again two coats on the roof that one's got a little chimney on it really sweet and again I will pick this bit up um, and the tea light can go in I think these I'm loving these Pull in my far forest village. So at the moment I'm just doing them in the white opal with a Himalayan salt and then I might do a tone, a set with like a soft pastel shade, maybe pinks and lilacs. I've got, well what I've got is raspberry mist and lavender mist but I don't know if they'll be too strong. I need to see. I do, do at the moment like these neutral colours. I think they're beautiful. And now my two little baby gnomes. So I've been doing some in terracotta and Let me show you. So I've been doing some in terracotta. These again are my prototypes. So his and hers, um, little cuties. Um, and then 
these are when I was trying the new stroke and coat colours. So I've got to do my test tiles on terracotta to see how they come out. Um, I'm going to put those in there just for safety. So these two in the same colours I have done on my stoneware clay. Oh, this one, his beard broke and I thought I'm going to try and glue it back together. You never know, it might work and it hasn't worked. That's not good. That's a, that's a dud, but loving the glaze. So this I just used purple glass with some blue hydrangea on, stroke and coat here. This was stro this was just a normal, um, I think this was raspberry mist and this was honeycomb. I'm not sure if I like the beard in the brown. It makes it look a little bit dull, but he's a dud anyway now. And this one, hopefully didn't have any broken parts. Let me take my cookie off. Love the glaze on the hat, that's nice. That's quite nice being able to use my Mako glazes, no, normal glazes on the Millennium, Stoneware Millennium clay. Blue Hydrangea on the rim. So, what do you think? Are we better with this? Okay, this is terracotta, this is Stoneware, so you're gonna have the difference, but do you prefer white beard or a brown beard? Maybe a combination is quite nice. I like the freshness of the white. I've got to be honest, but when they're actually glazed, you can't tell if they're terracotta or stoneware. And I have so much terracotta with 10% grog clay that I don't know how to use because I can't use that really, my earthenware clay for um, my mugs and stuff. So I've got so much terracotta surplus that I think it would be nice if I use that for the gnome. So I might do that in future, which means I'll be sticking then with the stroke and coat because I can't use these glazes on my terracotta clay. But um, love them, love the little babies. They are cute, whichever way you look at them. I love my little gnomes, they are cute. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, few experiments, I'm loving. This is, oh, 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 oh. I really, I really love this. That I'm so, so happy with. And I'm really excited on this effect. Um, know now where to apply it and how much I need to leave for drippage. I also, uh, I'm loving this wave on here. I did two. Why am I missing one? <laughs> I'm thinking, I did two with this slip on. Where, where's the other one? I haven't took it out of the kiln. It's blending into the background. It's down here. Oh, has it dripped? Looks like it's dripped. Hang on. Put your glasses on, Jeanette. I've got a little bit of drippage, but not very much. So that... Oh, it's okay. Okay, that bottom's okay. Let me watch these houses. I don't knock them over here as I'm leaning over to the camera. The base is quite neat there. Oh, yes. I like that. That's very nice. Oh, that is lovely. So I love this soft wave, but again, it would equally be just beautiful on its own in a single glaze. I've done a combo. I can't help but do combos. I think a single glaze is not going to be interesting enough. And it would have been with that texture. I think less is more. Oh, I also like the brown of the cork with um, the combo here. So what have I done here? I have done, if I remember rightly, ah, oh, I can't remember, um, sandstone, sandstone here, birch here. Sandstone birch and then birch over the top. I like the sandstone, I think that's lovely. And I love the birch over the sandstone. On a smooth, I think that would be lovely. But I prefer, this swirl pattern with one glaze because I think it's too much competition with textured flowing glazes on top of a lovely soft swirling pattern. But that is very nice. Ooh, might keep that one for ourselves. I think that would be very nice for um, hand lotion in our bathroom. I knew I'd done another one. I'm thinking, where was it? Do you know, I'm really happy with that kiln opening. Really happy. What a way to start the day. Beautiful sunshine. 
go now and get some breakfast and I'm in a really happy mood before I start my day at work. Um, what a good way to start the day. Thanks ever so much for joining me and um, oh, I'm happy, I'm really pleased. What a lovely kiln opening. I've missed this, I've missed this. Still a lot more learning. I'm only two years into my journey, but always so much to learn. And thank you everybody for sharing all your tips, hints, tricks on um, Instagram and YouTube, because that's where I'm gaining all my knowledge from and experimenting. Have a good day, everybody. And I hopefully see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.